Hey guys, it's Jeannie Taravinich from Kara Tutoring and today we're going to be going over momentum, impulse, and collisions in AP Physics 1. So we're going to get you that 5 on the exam in May, okay? So if you're new to Kara Tutoring, Kara Tutoring is a global nonprofit organization that um, aims to give free tutoring services to low-income students and this is a very helpful program for many people. Um, we work with all sorts of subjects from SAT, ACT, subject test, AP, IB, all of that. So if you you're interested go to the description link below and then you can go to the page where it explains about everything about um, applying to be a, a student and all of that all right so why don't we get started all right so momentum what is momentum okay momentum is going to be shown as um, P and then P is a vector because it is the multiplication of mass and velocity and velocity is a vector and this will be denoted as kg times meter over second all right so momentum important things to know this is like I just said it is a vector so there can be an a momentum in the x direction and there can be momentum in the y direction so if you have a an object that is moving in two dimensions you're gonna have to show you gonna you're gonna have to talk about the specific component of momentum in the x direction and the y direction another thing that you have to know momentum is conserved um, especially in physics one you don't really see um, momentum not being conserved you're gonna be getting into that in uh, physics C but in physics one momentum will be conserved in all of the collisions that we talk about all right so let's get into the collisions so it, we have an elastic collisions we have inelastic collisions and then we have perfectly inelastic all right so let's talk about elastic collisions so in the case that it's talking about um, momentum. Momentum will be conserved in here. It is also conserved in inelastic collisions and it is also conserved in perfectly inelastic collisions. But when we're talking about kinetic energy, elastic collisions is the only one that conserves kinetic energy. Inelastic and perfectly inelastic does not conserve kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is converted to something else, maybe heat energy or it depends on which collision you're actually looking at. All right, so let's actually get into these um, collisions and see what they're actually talking about. So in elastic collisions, I will give you a, an example, all right? So we have two cards that are moving towards each other at a specific velocity. We'll call this velocity one and we'll call this velocity two. And they're moving this way and this way. At impact, they briefly touch, very briefly touch, and then they immediately go back in the other direction in the same velocity, just with a negative component. Um, this is negative right here. So same velocity, just in a negative component all right so this this shows that kinetic energy is conserved because the map the magnitude of this velocity is the same as the magnitude of the final velocity and same for this block the magnitude of the this the first velocity is the same as the final velocity all right so let's get into and now we're going to talk about perfectly inelastic and then um, just a note inelastic itself like the middle version is just something between elastic and inelastic so we're just going to be talking about perfectly inelastic and elastic collisions just so we see the extremes of both versions all right so in perfectly inelastic collisions uh, the example that i'll give you is that we have two cards moving or it could be one card at rest and one card moving doesn't matter so they're moving or at rest right and then when they when they're at impact, they're going to stick and they're just going to stay like that. Velocity equals to zero or the overall thing is going to move in one direction in a specific velocity, all right? So in here, we can see that kinetic energy is not conserved because the magnitude of this block initially does not, does not um, correlate or is not equal to the magnitude of the final velocity of that block. Same thing for this block. The magnitude of the velocity of this block is going to be different from the final velocity of that um, that block. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk about another aspect of momentum. We have impulse, and y'all don't know what this means yet, or you might. But impulse, we're going to be getting into how impulse was created. So impulse is the change in momentum it is denoted as j okay and it is it has units of kg 
meters per second. So it's the same thing as impulse, just because it's, it's just a change of it. And how do we get to the equation for the change in momentum or impulse? So why don't we go back to Newton's second law? So we have F net equals MA. And we can change this to M delta V over delta T, which we can change into M VF minus VI over delta T, which is also the same thing as if we distribute this mass, we can see that this becomes MVF minus MVI over delta T. And does this look familiar? Yes, that is momentum. So we're going to be changing that into change in momentum over change in time, which equals to F net that we had in the beginning. And if we rearrange this, we can get F net delta T equals change in momentum, which is impulse. That is impulse right here, all right? So let's look at a few scenarios where impulse is, it is talked about um, regularly on AP Physics 1. So, so in scenario number one, we have this dude falling from somewhere and he is at velocity equals five meters per second. I don't know if that's even possible, but he's falling, 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 and then he lands the ground with straight locked legs and they hurt. it hurts very much and we would know that this would hurt very much, but he ends up being at velocity equals zero. Now in scenario number two, we have this guy falling, same thing, velocity five meters per uh, meters per second but then when he falls fall, fall, he's going to initially initially he's going to bend his knees so we have bent knees and then he goes to being straight up so this is where he reaches velocity equals zero what's the difference between these two alright so the change in momentum or impulse is going to be the same in these both uh, in both of these scenarios just because of the change in velocity and the mass oh I forgot to say the mass is the same for these two people and um, the velocity initial and velocity final are going to be the same as you can see here so what's different all right let's look at impulse so f net delta t equals impulse now if impulse stays the same and in this scenario it takes a longer time for this guy to reach um, velocity equals zero just because he was bending his knees so it takes a longer time for him to get completely impacted then if this increases and this stays the same, then that means the net force acted upon that this person right here has to be lower. Therefore, this guy's F net is lower while this guy's F net is greater. So you might see in an AP Physics 1 question where it says, which scenario would this um, person prefer if they were to get hurt? And you would say um, the scenario where the F net will be lower, which means the, uh, the scenario where the change in time is greater for the person to feel completely impacted or for them to reach velocity equals zero or the final velocity, whatever it is. Um, finally, why don't we look at the graphs that are included. So, so we're going to have force net and time. So this, as you can see, Let's have a graph like this, all right? If we have a graph like this, what do you think the area in between is going to be? This area, because F net times delta T, change in time is right here, because that equals to, um, to impulse, then the area of this area of F T graphs is going, to is going to talk about impulse. And that will be your impulse. And this is the final thing of our lesson today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. You guys should check out the videos that Kara Tutoring has. It's really going to help you on your SAT. Um, I'm going to keep making these AP videos, just very small ones for to help you guys. And I hope you guys keep studying and get good grades and come back next time.